Thanks, Coach, for a few minutes. We'll take you. Uh, Ross Martin, go ahead. Hey, Coach Bateman. Uh, you all moved, or I guess you moved, Jacorius Conley back to nickel against Duke um, and, and played Cam Kelly a lot of safety, and, and Don Chapman kind of moved around. I was wondering why the move. Is it permanent with Conley to nickel? And kind of what else you liked and, and, and saw from your uh, secondary against Duke? Um, yeah, so there's a lot there. So, number one, I think Cam Kelly was playing really well, and, 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 I, and I wasn't playing him enough. And I just – after the Georgia Tech game, I just said, I, I said, I, I, I got to play him. He, he deserves to play. He's one of our best players. And it was just hard because him and Conley were primarily playing the same position. And so there was part of that. The other part of it was, you know, against Duke, we knew the nickel was going to need to be involved in the run fit some. And, um, and that's, that's a strength of JQs. You know, we, we thought – we, we actually thought, you know, with pressure would be a part of it too. And we kind of got away from that a little bit, but, um, you know, so pressure, and we just felt like that was better. And then with Don, you know, Don is, is a, I mean, I, I mean, he's really the unsung hero of that whole thing, right? Because we, we moved him out to play corner because, you know, with Storm not going, we just felt like we needed a, a more veteran guy as the, as the third option out there. And I thought Don played really well. So, I mean, Don Chapman played four positions Saturday, right? He played, played both corners nickel and he played will linebacker in, in, in one of our six DB deals. So, um, you know, I was really proud of those guys. I thought they played well. Is this a situ situation where it kind of per game basis with, with where Conley is and where Cam is, or you think playing Cam more at safety kind of moves Conley into nickel? Um, I think it'll be getting those two guys in the best position, talking about Cam and JQ to help us. And I think sometimes it'll be JQ back at safety more and sometimes it'll be JQ at nickel more. And I think as Storm gets healthier, it'll probably impact that a little bit too. So, I, they, you know, I was proud of how they, they handled it really well. Um, you know, JQ played almost all his snaps at nickel, um, but we were ready for him to go in at safety if we needed him to. And, and Geo Biggers played really well. I mean, Geo Biggers played free and bandit and played really well. So I was proud of all those guys. Andrew Jones. Hey, Coach. Max said after the game that you guys uh, used a lot more press coverage Saturday than you have. What led to that move, and how did it affect the rest of the defense? Maybe the stuff that you called, or how the guys played in particular. Um, you know, Andrew, we play a lot of press anyway, right? So um, I think we, we were a little bit more. Um, I think, I think we, we were focused more on, on trying to stay in press coverage more, and not not get out of it against certain looks than we have been. Um, I, I felt like our corners matched up really good with their receivers. Our, our you know our two corners were, you know, in Chapman too. They're good. They're better at the line of scrimmage. Um, and so I think that was part of it. It was more just like, hey, look, we weren't going to, you know, even though like it was third and 10, we were still going to play press. And, uh, and, and we, I think we got one pass interference call, which. And, um, and, and so I thought it was pretty good, you know, to, to play that much press to only get one, you know, pass interference called. So. Was it considerably more or because he made a point of bringing it up? And I'm just kind of curious. Uh... You know, um, what what the breakdown was there? Yeah, I don't know if it was considerably more, but it was more. Andrew, we play press a lot, dude. Well, I know, I know. I just it, he brought it up, and it seemed like it was a little bit. No, I mean, I mean, so. like so, like um, like there's certain things that the offenses can do to to get you make nervous about press, right? And and against Duke, it was we weren't going to let that bother us as much. We were going to stay in press. I guess that's the main the main point. Cool. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, Aaron, go ahead. Hey, Jay, it was a pretty big swing in, in terms of performance from Georgia Tech to Duke. Kind of is it – do you have a pretty good handle on what this team defense is? I mean, if there's that kind of level of extremes from not so good to – Yeah, I mean, you know, Aaron, we talk to our guys all the time about not being, like, results-driven. You know, that, like, how you play – and, the, and how you do your job is more important than, than the result. You know, I, if I play corner and I play press man and I do a really good job and, the, and, the, and they run it and get 12, like that doesn't mean that that was a bad snap for me. And so I, I think the thing we did against Duke, I thought we tackled on the perimeter better and I thought we were way better on third downs. And, and when you're really good on third downs and you tackle on the perimeter, right, you, you kind of you, you eliminate the chances they get to, to get explosive plays. So obviously the, you know, the first play of the first half and the first play of the second half were awful, but other, other than those two plays, I, I really felt like we, we were in the right fit. We, 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 we tackled well and we didn't make as many mistakes. And 
So, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, Aaron, the Georgia Tech game, I didn't do a very good job, right? And so, you know, I, I, I kind of, you know, like, like I think everybody should do when, you, when something's not successful. You start with yourself, right? And so I said, okay, like I, I need to do the – these are things that we do better. These are things that I think structurally are – that we execute better, and I need, to do, I need to do this more. And I think that showed up Saturday. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Greg Barnes. Jay, I was just hoping you could kind of expound a little bit on, on what Miles Murphy and, and Kevin Hester are bringing you up front. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think Miles is playing a really high level. I think he's disruptive. He's really hard to get – he's really hard to block one-on-one, -on -one, Greg. You know, and so it, it affects the rest of the defense. And then I think Kevin Hester just – you know, I was talking to, you know, Brick Haley, who's working with us, helping with us, so, you know, and um, I was like, you know, Hester only played one year of high school football, you know, so like, I, I think there's still a, a lot of room for growth with him, but I mean, they're big kids that can run and are athletic. I, I mean, uh, they're, they're, they're starting to play like we think they're really capable of, and I think they have a really bright future. Thanks. Yes, sir. See y'all, Brown. Hey, Jay, uh, you alluded to, uh, Cameron Kelly kind of making improvements and, and being one of the better players. What clicked for him? When, when would you say, you know, you kind of saw him turn the corner? You, you know, CL, I, I, uh, I thought he was a little bit up and down a year ago. And when he played really well, he played really well. And then when he didn't, obviously, it was the, it was the opposite. And then I thought in the spring, he had a good spring. I thought some other guys had better springs. We talked about it. How he, and, and then I thought really in the summer, I thought he had a great summer. And I thought he was playing really well. And I just – yeah, I, I wasn't playing him enough. I, you know, I just, you know, it, it was like, it was hard to take some of the other guys off. And so I just, after George Tech, I said, look, I just got to, we, he needs to, he deserves to play more. We need him to play more. Um, and, and the thing Cam does, obviously he played great Saturday. Right? I think, you know, the interception was a great play. Um, he tackled really well. Um, the, the other thing about Cam is he is really, really bright. And so, you know, he can organize us and get us into the right calls and, and, and help get everything ironed out out there. And I think that really helped us Saturday, too. So um, I was really proud of him. I wanted to ask you about targeting. Um, have you done anything different? In like, I feel like on one hand, we've we've had enough time now to where this has been an emphasis and kids should should know how to tackle without their head but on the other hand it almost seems like it's still an instinctive kind of play when you have to make certain kind of tackles um how, how do you go about trying to just relay that to, to you guys yeah so so we talk about the strike zone where we hit all the time we talk about where you know where our our aiming points are the, the problem cl especially like you know i coach the safety it's like the problem for those guys is i don't think i don't think the officials understand i know the fans don't understand how fast those people are moving you know, and so when I'm 15 yards away from a guy and I'm driving a ball and there's a receiver who's running a route, like, I don't think you understand how fast those, those kids are moving. And so, you know, as the trajectory of the ball changes, all of a sudden, right now you're in a situation where, I, you know, my, I'm going to make a play, they're going to make a play, and, and, and that's when it happens. And so, um, look, I mean, I, the game is much safer than it once was. You know, when I grew up, you know, there were guys like Jack Tatum and guys like that. I mean, you know, those guys, were, you know, that, that was when – that was that was legit back then, right? So like it, the game's changed, right? It's made it safer. I think it's made it better for for people to play longer. And so I mean that you, you have to change with with the game. I, I think the unfair part we're targeting is, is some of those bang bang plays when a kid is not trying to, you know, necessarily, you know, injure somebody or 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 take a shot to the head. You know, like like in, against Georgia Tech with Trey Morrison. You know, Trey wasn't trying to hit that kid, and they ended up overturning it. You know, some, the ball thrown in the middle is a bang bang play, and they got to, you know, they got to officiate it. So. Um, but absolutely you have to change how you, how you coach, especially I think the second, third level defenders on, on in cutting routes. Thank you. Yep. Gregory Hall. Hey Jay, Cedric Gray, um, since kind of rotating with Eugene Asante has, has very much excelled and is one of your best defenders so far, as far as grading out, just what have you seen out of him and just his development so quickly, it seems like. Yeah. I mean, I've been impressed with him since he got here. And uh, I mean, first of all, I, I think he's really athletic. He can run. He's a high school receiver, you know, so I, I think all those things are in place. And then I think he, you know, he is a really um, cerebral kid. He can play Mike and Will, you know, um, 
we put him outside some. I mean, he can, he really is a bright kid. And so I think you, you factor all those in. And then I think he's a kid that plays with a physical edge. And uh, I, I'm, I couldn't be happier with him. I think he's got another, he, there's another, you know, a lot of the kids we're talking about are sophomores, right? There's a lot of sophomores with really bright futures. And how are you scouting this Florida State offense? I mean, they're running the ball at a very efficient rate, but then the passing game and the turnover rates just aren't there. So just how do you defend a team that can give you one thing and then their other things are just struggling? Um, yeah, I mean, they, <laughs> the, the two quarterback, like I, we were just talking about it before I came out down here. Like the two, the two quarterbacks are so different. You know, it's, it's really, it's really intriguing. Like most teams you play, you know, if there's two quarterbacks, like there's a little bit of a difference with these guys. It's a, it's a pretty significant difference. So yeah, I think you have to have a plan for both quarterbacks. Obviously last year, you know, Jordan Travis, we had a hard time tackling him. Um, so that, so that's an emphasis for us, but yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think, you know, coach Norvell and those guys, they do a great job in the run game. You know, they, every week's a different run attack, you know, so you've, you've got to be able to, you know, count on your kids to figure things out a little bit as the game goes on. I think that'll be a real key to us is like our kids being able to identify what they're getting and, and, and read their keys and, and, and handle the adjustments that needed in the run game. All right, we'll close up today with uh, Ross Martin. Go ahead, Ross. Hey, Coach. I'm trying to get you to talk about every player in your secondary. Uh, Trey Morrison, I feel like we haven't talked about him much, even in the offseason and, and during the season. But he plays almost as much as anybody for you um, on defense and then had the, the big uh, scoop and score. What can you say about his leadership, his play, um, the season for you at safety? Yeah, I've been really proud of him. You know, a year ago, we, we had to move him kind of from nickel to safety. And, uh, you know, he was fine, but he, he didn't do a great job kind of running the show back there, being the communicator, being the, the leader that we, that I expected from him. And we had, we had some hard talks in the off season about like, look, you know, athletically, it's not, it, I mean, Trey Morrison's a really athletic kid. He's physical. He can play man coverage. He's really good. I said, you need to take the next step forward as a leader and as a guy that communicates and runs the show back there. And I feel like he's done a really good job with that. And I thought Saturday did a really good job. You know, they gave us some stuff early that he, he ironed out for us and, uh, you know, I think, you know, the, the, the fumble, we tell our kids to scoop and score every fumble, right? Make them, make them blow it dead. And I think if he hadn't have scooped it, they probably would have blown it dead. You know, so um, I, think, I think that's just another example of trade, you know, being a veteran and being a leader. And uh, you're right, he plays the most, I, I, I think, you know, so, and, and there's a reason for that. You know, he's a guy we trust and who can play along a lot of snaps. He plays, he plays at a high velocity, most snaps. And we look at the, all the stuff Hess gives us and, and Trey, you know, Trey doesn't, He's in good shape. He can play a lot. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really, really impressed with how he's taken on a leadership role as because he's really the only older kid we got back there. All right, Coach, thanks for a few minutes today. Appreciate it. Thanks.